Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship at Home. Spirit of Fire at Home. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. Want to welcome everybody here tonight for our online broadcast. Uh, we don't believe it's by chance that you showed up tonight, whether it's live or through replay. We do believe that God has led you to this broadcast um, for your enrichment, for your edification, that whatever it is that will be spoken tonight will be a blessing to you. So on behalf of my wife, Raquel, and myself, we would just want to say welcome to everybody tonight. I want to get everybody an opportunity to come on in. Also, click your watch parties, your shares. Let people know that we're on tonight. We want you all, come on, my Spirit of Fire folk, put it out there. Let them know that we're on tonight. Uh, we're going to be dealing with something that I believe the Spirit of God wants me to discuss and talk about. Um, as I was studying it for myself and it was just some things that was uh, revealed to me for me. I wanted to reveal it and to share it with you all as well. Um, so it's going to be good tonight. Uh, we've been dealing with the series uh, Greater and just talking about uh, greater works. Uh, Jesus said greater works we're going to be, um, be doing than he did. Um, and so even with that, we've talked about the Holy Spirit within. And then we're going to start this Sunday coming, dealing with the spirit of pun, talking about the, the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, tonight, though, I want to, uh, we're still going to stay within that vein. I'm going to deviate just a little bit. Um, if I can give this a topic, I want to give it uh, me and my big mouth. Me and my big mouth, the creative power of the tongue, the, the creativity um, that we have in our tongue. And there's something that God really wants to get across us. The Lord is really saying that my people really need to understand this principle and this law that they can create whatever they need with their mouth and understanding who you are. And so God has given me personally a mandate. He says, go teach my people who they are. And so I want to, um, I'm, I'm going to be faithful to that. And I want to talk to you about this, this, this creativity that we have. And so before we start with that, I want us to go ahead and just have a word of prayer. Father, just thank you for this. Another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you that revelation and knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force, none of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of the word of God. We do approach the holy written word of God reverently, and we just thank you for the creativity. We thank you for um, the wisdom of God that's released tonight. Thank you that I have the mind of Christ and your wisdom is formed within me to articulate properly and effectively to your people. We thank you that every ear is anointed to hear, every heart open, ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. I release the power of God now in operation and demonstration. I speak life to every situation, every dead situation, every broken situation, every hurtful situa situation. I speak the peace of God. I speak the life of God, the nature of God to be manifested, the spirit of God to come um, to fruition now in your lives. And Father, we just thank you in advance. Let your... Let the Holy Spirit quicken our mortal bodies and make them alive. And so we just thank you for it. Thank you for the gifts, of, <clears throat> the gifts of the Spirit to be an operation and demonstration. And we covered those gifts to manifest as the Spirit will. And so we just thank you. And we bless you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Um, I want to start off with this statement. Dealing with the creativity, the creative power of the tongue. And it says here that God is the most creative being there is, and he has made us in his image and likeness. So we are creative beings as well with the authority and the power to create. And in the beginning, God created everything by what he said and what he spoke. And because we have been created as a reflection of who he is, we've been given the same creative ability and power to speak things into existence. And the Lord wants to really get this point across that you can construct, that you can create, that you can restructure your life by beginning to speak what your destiny is into existence, that you can begin to speak it into existence, that you can begin to decree a thing and it will be established in your life, in your lives. And that God's nature, God's power, God's light, his enlightenment will begin to shine upon your ways to now manifest the thing that you're speaking into existence. And so we want to make sure that we understand this. And so even in the book of Hebrews 11 and 3, it says that through faith, we understand 
that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. The worlds were framed by the word of God. To frame means to put in order. It means to be brought together. So God put things in order. He brought it together. He created with the words of his mouth. So we can frame our world personally with the words of our mouths. And so we got to understand that. Um, I just, it just came to my mind. Um, I remember a, um, a, some years ago, this may have been well over man, 14, probably 15, 16, something years ago. Um, I began to have a succession of dreams. It was in this particular month. It was like three dreams that I had in a row, just back to back. And um, in this first dream, um, there was somebody that was chasing me in this dream. And all of a sudden, while they were chasing me, I got to a place where I couldn't go anywhere. And so, and they had a gun and they were going to shoot me. And so all of a sudden out of nowhere, it's like this purple cape or sheet just came out of nowhere and I just threw it in front of me. Like, kind of like if I had a cape on like I had a superhero would and just throw it in front. And, and what I began to do is I began to speak and the bullets couldn't penetrate that purple uh, sheet. And so I had another dream where somebody once again was chasing me. It was like in this warehouse or wherever. And it was like, I couldn't go anywhere. I was at a place where I couldn't go anywhere and I had to stay on my ground. And so this person began to shoot. Now there's this movie, The Matrix, where at the end of it, Neo in the first one, uh, Morpheus tells him, he says, listen, when you understand who you are, you won't have to dodge bullets. And so it began the thing where just like in that movie, it's like they were stopped, um, the bullets stopped in front of me, and what, it was like just ricochet off of this power and force in front of me, and they just went off to wherever they went. And all of a sudden, God began to show me something. The third dream, um, I was in this house, it was actually my mother's house, and there was this person that we just knew, and it was like in this big window, and this person's face came up and I saw a person beside me. They were smiling. It was a person that we knew. I knew that person was for us, but it was this person who was speaking negatively against my wife and I. And so what I began to do was, and their face, it was so huge in the window, their face began to shape shift into that of an ogre. And the inst my instant reaction was to begin to speak against the person who was speaking against us. And so what happened was, as I began to speak, was getting ready to speak, my mouth sealed up where I couldn't say anything about the person. Later on, I began to kind of think about the dreams and the last dream I called the pastor. And I said, man, I, and I told him the dream. And he said, Mike, he told me, he says, one of the things he says, never speak out of anger. Uh, because I knew in that dream, whatever, if I was allowed to speak, whatever I said towards that person would happen because of the authority of my words and the confidence and the faith in my words that whatever I released was going to come to pass. And so God began to show me and just reveal to me in the other dreams about that purple um, sheet representing authority, our roar to our authority as believers, that when I began to speak in my authority, that it would stop anything that was coming against me. And so God began to show me these things and reveal the authority that I have as a believer in what I speak. And so what I need to, uh, what I want to share with you is we're going to talk about some of this, this authority. And God is saying, I really need my people to get this and understand that a lot of times they are framing their world with the words of their mouth, but they're framing it with a net with negative words. And if they don't like what they've been receiving, they can restructure and reframe it with now positive words in alignment with my word to now change and rearrange what's been going on. So God is saying people really need to understand who they are and the authority in their mouth, because so many people have just haphazardly just speak things and not thinking about what they're saying and not real because they really don't realize the power in what they say. And so what in your confession, you should speak where you are going 
and not where you are. You should speak where you're going and not where you are. Um, and you need to understand the power of your words. So you need to begin to speak strategically and where it is you're trying to go and where it is you desire to go. You need to speak the end from the beginning. And now God says that his favor will begin to lighten upon your ways and shine upon your ways for you to begin to see how to get to that destination, how to get to that place. And when you begin to open up your mouth and you begin to talk and you begin to declare and you begin to decree, it will cause things to begin to line up and cause things to come to pass in your life. And so now we need to be strategic, uh, even on a daily basis. Some call it commanding your morning, commanding your day. What do you set your day? Set the tone of your day. You declare what's going to happen during that day, not waiting to see what's going to happen you declare in advance, this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. I will conquer this day. I expect to see favor given unto me. I declare that policies, rules and regulations, laws, hearts, minds and decisions are being changed and reversed on my behalf. And so you begin to speak those things, declare and decree those things and you'll begin to see those things. Now I have this statement that I typed out here and it's simply this, that the Lord wants you to finish right and finish strong. He wants you to finish right and to finish strong. And so you have to understand no matter where you started, God wants you to finish right and he wants you to finish strong. And so you need to declare that I will finish right and I will finish strong. So God wants you to finish strong in your life. So no matter where you've been now, I'm going to be speaking to different people tonight. Because depending on where you currently are, some people you feel as though that you're in a great rhythm for your life. Some people, something is going on right now that you feel like there is no hope. There's some people you feel a little stagnant. There's some people it's like, I think I'm kind of going in the right direction, but I'm not positively sure. And there are people in different scenarios, different stages of life. But you got to know this, that wherever stage you're in, God wants you to finish right and finish strong. So if something is going bad, you can begin to transform it and turn it around with the words of your mouth, the tongue. The tongue is the pen of a ready writer, documenting on the hearts of men. You can document on your heart. You sow into your heart when you begin to speak. And so God's saying this. He says, you need to begin to declare. Stop thinking. Listen, now, 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 let me help you with this. Sometimes so many people have been so uh, inundated and in some cases contaminated with the words that people have been saying through media and talking about speaking into the universe and speaking in certain things. I understand that you declare because words will create words will create matter. Words will create things. And as you begin to speak, it'll now perpetually go forth. Um, the scripture talks about that the, um, the world, um, uh, that all the creation is being sustained by the word of God's power. In other words, the word being spoken is constantly manifesting itself. What God spoke in the beginning is still perpetually manifesting and creating because even scientists say that the universe is still expanding. It's still growing. So God in the beginning, when he began to speak, boom, throughout eons of time, the word that he spake, spoke millions, billions of years ago, however long it was, it is continually, continuously manifesting itself even now to this day. This is a powerful thing, folks. We have the authority to speak life. You have the authority to speak death. What is it that you want to come out of this situation? You need to declare it. You need to decree it. Well, I'm tired of saying it. The reason why you're tired of saying it is because you really don't believe it. And so we need to deal with that right now. Because if you truly believe what you said is going to come to pass, you would not get off of it. You would stay on it. You will now begin to believe to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. And you need to speak life. Jesus said it like this. The words I speak, they are spirit. They are life. And if there's death going on, you can speak life. Um, there was this time um, not too long ago, I, um, the spirit of God showed me um, to do something, even when my wife was concerned, there was something that she was dealing with this cough. And he said, and he showed me, I want you to sit and speak life over her. And I said, come here. I said, I want to pray over you. 
And I want you to, because I just saw in a, it was just like in a flash in my mind, I saw the image or the picture of me speaking over her. As I began to speak over her, it was like, he said this, he says, take my word because in Proverbs four, he says, attend to my word, 20 through 22. Uh, my son, attend to my word, incline my, thine ears to my saying, for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. It's like medicine, a translation says. So my word is medicine. So the same way she would take medicine, let her take my word. He says, speak words over her. And so as I begin to do that, and she had been awakened a lot throughout the night with the cough. And this particular night, as we did that, and she laid there, as I began to speak over her, and I began to speak to her body, and I began to declare to her body, and I began to decree to her body, all of a sudden, then, we began to see things happen. And that night, that night, she slept like a baby. There was not one ounce, that was not one situation that showed up where she coughed. Not one. I said, do you realize that you did that all night? She was like, yeah, I realize it. And so now, this is the thing. We have to now continuously do these things to speak life over ourselves. Listen, in our pathway is life and there is no death. No, now listen, I'm telling you, when we speak life, I don't care what Satan tries to bring up, we have authority and we have victory. And what he would try to do, he would try to flare up symptoms to try to contradict what you're speaking to get you off of what you're speaking. And don't you dare get off of what you're speaking because God is saying this, that if you stay the course, that you will see transformation and change in your life in that situation, whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, that you have the authority, you have the victory. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even your faith. The Bible says it like this in the book of Matthew 12, 35 through 37 in the New Living Translation. It says a good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. And I tell you this, you must give an account on judgment day for every idle word you speak. The words you say will either acquit you or condemn you. So it is very important of what we say. We will have to give an account of the words that we have spoken in this life. Now, this is interesting that, man, you mean to tell me that I'm going to be held accountable for my words? Yeah, we got to be mindful of it. We have to be mindful of what we say. So we need to, need to now go and say, okay, I'm going to do some course correction now. I'm going to begin to be mindful. Listen, if you're a person that you know you're struggling with your mouth, that you struggle with saying the wrong thing, that you struggle with having an attitude, you struggle, you know, I'm just going to speak my mind. And sometimes that's the problem. You're speaking what's, what's coming out of an unrenewed mind and you're speaking your opinion versus the word of God concerning that situation. And you don't realize that you're empowering that situation by speaking negatively about it. See, you got to understand that you can either help change the situation or keep the situation or enforce the problem, either enforce an answer or enforce a problem. Whatever it is, you have the authority to change and to rearrange things in your life. Listen, this is the kingdom of God. This is how the kingdom of God functions. This is a law of the kingdom, the law of confession. Whatever I say, listen, to say me, to confess means to say the same thing or to admit you're in agreement, whether it's God's word or whether it's the problem that's coming up. What are you agreeing with? If you keep saying, well, you know what? It ain't good. Ain't nothing working out. It's the same thing today that it was yesterday. You know what? Ain't nothing changing. Ain't nothing. And every time you turn around, there's a negative confession because you're so consumed by the problem that you're not thinking about the solution. And for some of you, if you got good, if you have good, um, good momentum going forward in an area, Keep it going. Keep speaking life. Go to the next phase. Go to the next faith project. Go to the next thing. Keep stretching your faith. Keep going from faith to faith and glory to glory. And so that's how you keep speaking life. Okay, you conquer this area, this level of your life. Conquer the next level. Keep moving forward. Keep pushing. Keep going. Keep growing. Keep expanding. Keep building. Keep accelerating. Keep the thing moving forward. If you feel as though that you're stagnant in your life, that you had a season of of fruitfulness and things will work, but now you get kind of like in a blah stage. You feel lukewarm. You feel like apathetic. You feel like nothing's happening. Nothing's working. Well, begin to speak life. Get something agitated. Get something stirred up. Listen, put your faith on something. 
Begin to stir yourself up for a new adventure in God, a new adventure in Christ. Begin to speak life. No matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, this is the time, this is your season, and it will change and it will turn around in the name of Jesus. And so I shut down stuff. I shut down enemy talk. I shut down things that Satan is trying to bring against your life to try to get things off course. And I declare, I declare healing. I declare restoration. I declare wholeness. I declare advancement. I declare increase. I declare peace over your life. I declare it over my life. I declare it over everybody in my spiritual jurisdiction. I declare it and decree it in the name of Jesus. I declare it over every member, partner, and supporter of Spirit of Fire Fellowship, Michael May Ministries, every subsidiary. I declare and decree it over every business that we have, every business that you have. I declare increase, 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 increase in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, somebody need to say, I receive that. Type it. I receive it. Type amen. Type so be it. Type it is so. Receive the word of the Lord. Receive. Now, you need to begin to speak it. You need to begin to declare it. You need to begin to decree it. And you need to now say, I'm going to finish right and I'm going to finish strong. So this is your season. This is your time. I don't care. Listen, don't you dare pick up the fear that the world has right now. I don't care if it has, if things have hit um, people's lives that's close to you. You can now, well, well, hear me when I say this. When I say I don't care, don't mean I'm not have sympathy or empathy towards the situation. But I'm telling you this, even if it has hit prior to, you can now change what's going on in your life. You can decree from this day forward that every disease, germ, virus, bad bacteria, and infirmity that tries to touch or infiltrate my body dies instantly. I speak to every organ of my body. I command it to come into alignment with the word. I speak to my blood pressure. I call it 120 over 80. I speak to my heart. My heart beats with the rhythm of life, producing pure blood that flows throughout my body, promoting life and health. I thank you, Father, that my eyes are not dim, neither are my natural forces abated. Blessed are my eyes, for they see, and my ears, for they hear. Everything my hands touch, it prospers, it works, it flourishes. I'm a wise master builder in my life. I declare right now. See, I, I start writing stuff down as I was studying this. I was writing declarations of what I want to take place. I begin to write things like what it, whenever I go into an atmosphere, whenever I go into an arena, into an area, that every de a demonic force, every principality, power, um, ruler of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high and heavenly places have to bow down to, unto me. They have to be removed. And I dispel right now every demonic force that would try to exercise any um, power and authority over me. I shut it down now. Wherever I go, it can't touch me. It can't hurt me. It can't harm me. Why? Because I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places and no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No tongue, listen, every tongue that rises up against me in judgment, I condemn it and show it to be in the wrong because this is my heritage and my righteousness is of the Lord. And this is what we have to do. We have to declare and decree things and we'll see them come to pass. So you need to begin to call yourself. You need to begin to call your spouse. You need to begin to call your children. You need to begin to call your church, your business, your career blessed and to speak well of people around you. I declare in the name of Jesus that my children prosper in every arena that God has called for them to go into. I declare in the creed of my wife and I that we function in optimum success and level of excellence in all that we do, that we walk in the love of God, that we walk in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, that we begin to prosper and flourish and succeed in all that we do. Listen, you begin to speak it. You begin to declare and to decree it. Now watch this. A lot of times we don't realize the negative, um, the effects of negative words have had over our lives. See, negative words are curses. And so even when people begin to tell you growing up that you won't going to be anything, that you just like your daddy, you just like your mama, and really they're saying that from the negative connotation. And so what they're doing and not even realizing in some cases is they're releasing a curse. But we know Christ has redeemed us from every curse. We know that we function under the blessing. That ble the blessing causes prosperity and success, and we declare we nullify every negative word. Every neg I want you to begin to say that right now. Right now, say, in the name of Jesus, I cancel every negative word, 
every inoperative word that has been spoken against me that I have even spoken. I curse it now and I destroy it and I declare that the harvest is canceled now in Jesus name. All right. So now from here on, we're going to now build up and begin to speak life in that situation. So don't any longer speak death. So you speak things, husbands and wives speak that you have eyes only for one another, that you declare that there's intimacy and passion in your relationship, in your marriage, that you begin to declare and decree that your children, they rise up and call you blessed, that they work, that they walk in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, that, you know, wherever they are, that the influence of God's word and his spirit is upon their lives, that they walk worthy unto you, Lord, unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of you. You begin to declare and decree whatever it is and let the word do the work. God will manifest. Listen, he says this, I, listen, the word of God will not return void, but it'll complete and prosper into the thing where it, where it was sent. When you send that word out, you believe you receive it and you see it come to pass. See, the father spoke this world into the existence and we must learn to speak out of our spirit, man. Okay, how much time am I working with? I'm rolling here today. Now, in the book of Luke 645, and I'll speak it like this. And it, this is once again, um, um, in a line of, this is Luke's uh, account of what we just spoke out of uh, Matthew. It says, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Now, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. Whatever is in you is what's been coming out of you. Listen, I see people do it all the time. I see them, they say certain, they say one thing around me, but then later on it comes around and other stuff come out. That is like what really comes out of you when you're under pressure is what really come out. That, that, that's the thing where it's in you, that you need to begin to course correct. You need to begin to change and transform some things. It's very important what you believe in your heart. There are people who speak out of their head, but not out of their heart. And that's why they don't see power produced. They're speaking out of their head and not their heart because the word really hasn't gotten in them yet. Now, what you do when you meditate on this is the importance of meditating because you got to understand something that uh, the spirit and the word agree. Now, you got to understand here, the scripture didn't say in this text that out of the abundance of the head, the mouth will speak. It says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So whatever really gets into your heart, your born again human spirit, that now it's going to flow out. It's going to come out. Whatever has gotten in you over a period of time, whatever you meditated on and got it so fixated on it and fixated on it, that is now going from your head to your heart. And now you truly believe that thing, whatever it is. And see, sometimes you can believe a thing that's false, but to you, it's the truth. So you got to now say, okay, God, let me spend time. And this is going to come through the course correction is through, I mean, to, to renew your soul. You got a man, you got to spend time meditating on the word. You got to hear that word, mutter that word, get that way of thinking out of you so that it can get into your heart. So now when you say a thing that's in your heart and you speak it out of your mouth, it will produce and it will come to pass. Jesus didn't have to keep repeating things over and over again. He said one time, he says, Lazarus come forth. And every, listen, and Lazarus had to come forth because the Lord spoke to him. And this is important. This is why I said, be strategic. Don't just be all over the place saying stuff. Because when Jesus spoke to Lazarus, I believe this. If Jesus didn't specifically say his name, I believe whoever was in that vicinity that was dead would come forth. Because he said this, Lazarus, I need you to come forth. You come forth. And then he came out bound. And then they said, he said, loose him and let him go. And so even though, now that can be a whole nother message right there, that even though you're spiritually alive under God, you still bound with stuff. And God is saying, loose them and let them go. And Satan has been hounding some of you with mistakes of the past, with things of the past. And now God is saying there is restoration that is hitting your house and you need to begin to declare restoration. I declare restoration in my marriage, restoration in my relationship with my children, 
restoration in my finances, restoration in my body, restoration in the situation. Even during this time, some of you may have had a hit even where COVID is concerned, where it's like it affected your business, affected your ministry, affected whatever, your job, whatever. We declare in Jesus' name that you on the uprise and you on the upswing and that you increasing now more and more. Listen, I'm telling you, God increased us. God, God increased us since this thing hit. I'm telling you, we've experienced increase since, God, since this thing hit. And I'm telling you, God is the God of increase. He's the God of more than enough. He's the God of restoration. But now he's giving you a po the power, the authority to begin to speak life. And it is very important. It is very important that, I, and I want to I wanna get ready to finish with this, that you need to know how to, how do I want to say it? Um, you must build yourself up constantly in the spirit because you need to renew your mind, speak from your spirit. You need to mix the word with the spirit. You must mix the word with the spirit. What do I mean by that? We must, in the book of Jude 20, um, the Bible talks about building yourselves up um, on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keeping yourselves in the love of God. When you build your spirit man up and you strengthen your spirit man and you begin to declare and decree the word of God, th because the spirit and the word agree, you will not speak things out of alignment of the word of God because the Holy Spirit in you will begin to quicken you. He'll begin to co course correct you and say, okay, I want you to start speaking this. I want you to declare this. And when you're building yourself up, you're strengthening yourself. And now it's easier to believe God when you're speaking those things. And this is going to be vitally important, folks. And I've been telling people this over and over again. More than ever, we need to begin to pray in the spirit. And also, we need to begin to declare and decree things. There is spiritual power that's released. The book of... Uh, Matthew 7, um, 17, 20 says, and Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, be uh, removed hence to yonder place and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you. you the, listen, you got to understand something. This was a fit, uh, a literal tree that Jesus, a literal um, uh, mountain that Jesus was speaking to because he had just spoken to a literal tree, that fig tree. Sometimes we just think about it. We just use it as um, of, of it being in a figurative manner, talking about the mountains in our lives, which yes, it can, it can relate to that. But he's literally talking about if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, showing the power of faith, that I can tell this mountain to move from here to there, it'll obey me. When I speak out of my heart and I believe in my heart, the problem is there's lack of belief. There's so much unbelief in the hearts of men that now it's trying to, God is trying to get that flushed out so we can begin to rise up to the level of who we are and begin to declare and decree things and see them happen. This should be a time where we should see so many supernatural signs and wonders in our lives, in our ministries, on our jobs where we lay hands on the sick and we see them recover. We speak to things and they spike and increase that we speak to bank accounts, that we speak to businesses and they flourish and prosper, that we speak to sickness and disease and it's cursed at its root and those things wither up and die. I mean, we should speak to cancers and those things pop out of people. I mean, tumors, tumorous growth should be dissolving right now. We speak, we as the church, the body of Christ, God is raising up a generation. He's raising up an army to begin to go forth and to speak life. Now, this is going to be the thing. Some people is like some people are just uh, not interested. They like the thought of it, but don't put in the time necessary to build yourself up to get to that place where you begin to speak life. And then we look to depend on other people to use their faith to transform our situation. And no, God is requiring you to grow. He's requiring you to grow up now. That there's some that they've heard these things and they've shouted over these things for years. And God is saying, now is the time for my church to rise up and to now do great exploits. The scripture says now, he says in um, the book, um, in the book of uh, Proverbs 6 and 2, scripture says, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. 
So you are entangled or snared with the words that you speak. In other words, you will keep your words will keep you in bondage or cause you to be free. Are your words keeping the bondage, keeping you in that entanglement? Or is it now producing the freedom, bringing you out of that entanglement? What is it that you're speaking? Now, this is the victory. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And we got to speak it. So now we have to sow this word consistently. We have to sow it constantly. We have to declare and decree in the name of Jesus that the words that I speak, they are spirit and life. That we call those things which be not as though they were. We begin to speak life over every situation. Whether it's your spiritual life, your soul, your, your mental life, your mental well-being. That you declare and decree, I have the mind of Christ. The wisdom of God is formed within me. That Satan's tried to come to some people and tries to tear you down mentally. And try to make you think that life is not worth living. That it was, why should I go on? Why should I keep going forward? Listen, because you got a destiny, you got a charge to keep and a God to glorify. And I declare that you will fulfill the number of your days and you will fulfill it well. You will finish right and you will finish strong. And I declare it over your life in Jesus name. But you need to begin to declare. it. It's one thing for me to say it. It's another thing for you to say it. that you have authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you or harm you. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even your faith. You speak to your body. You speak to that pain. You speak to that thing. You speak to your joints. You speak to that lower back condition. You speak to that upper respiratory condition. You speak to whatever it is. You speak to your blood glucose levels. You command them to be normalized. You speak to your blood pressure. You command it to be normalized. And then you speak over yourself. My, my body functions in the perfection to which God created created it to function. And I also declare that I only put things in my body that produce life. Hey, listen, if that's what you got to start doing, renew your mind to how you eat. Renew your mind to what, what you need to put in your body. I declare I rest well every night. I declare that I'm disciplined, that I'm diligent and determined, that I do what's right because it's right and I do it right. I declare and decree that I have the mind of Christ, that I think thoughts that are in alignment with the word of God. I think thoughts that are in alignment with the will of God. And I declare and decree that all is well with me and my family. I declare that this bill is paid for. I declare and decree that I give. Therefore, it is given unto me again. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. That God is causing men to give unto my bosom. I declare and decree the favor of God over my life. I declare that even ungodly authorities are granting petitions unto me. I declare that policies, rules, regulations, laws, hearts, minds, and decisions are being changed and reversed on my behalf. I win battles I don't even have to fight because God is fighting them for me. I declare, I declare it in Jesus' name. I declare that I rest well every night. I rebuke nightmares, that I have a peaceful sleep. I have sweet dreams in Jesus' name. And you declare these things, you decree these things, and you set them in order. What is it that your destiny is? What is the destination? What is it that God is creating? Some of you, you don't even know what your destiny is. You don't even know what your purpose is. So this is what you do. I declare that my purpose, that the purpose for my life is revealed unto me, that it is clear and concise, and I know exactly what the Father wants me to do. Begin to speak it. Begin to declare it and declare that I have longevity. I live long and I live strong and I enjoy life in abundance to the full till it overflows. And I choose life. Use the power of your tongue to create what you need to create. And that's what I have to share with you tonight. Open up your mouth. Use your mouth. You talking anyway. Talk, talk, talk in alignment with the word of God. I know. It's discipline. We all got to do it. I'm constantly working on it. Sometimes I got to repent and say, Lord, oh, Lord, forgive me for that one. I messed up on that, that go around. But hey, I listen, I'm determined to get it right. I'm determined to do it right. To do what's right because it's right and to do it right. So I speak life and I'm in agreement with you that all things are working together for your good. Praise God. That's what I got for, for you tonight, folks. Amen. Amen. I pray that that was a blessing to you that it stirred you up, go back over this. Listen to it again throughout the day. Pull it up. Share it with someone. Listen, everybody, we know somebody that could use this word, that they need to hear this word. Because sometimes we don't always get it the first time we hear. So we need by repetition. I was listening to a message just today. 
that was in alignment with what got me to go in to even teach this message tonight. And I listened to that thing over, I might have listened to it about five, six, seven times. And I just played it over and over and over again to get it in me. And every time I listened to it, I heard something different in it. Something different was reiterated. Because sometimes while you're listening to things, you get so focused on one thing that you just missed the other thing that was said. So go back, listen to it. Feed your spirit. Go to bed listening to this tonight. The word will get in you. Let it get in you. Meditate on this and you'll see change and transformation. Amen. Man, praise God. I enjoyed this tonight. Hey, y'all, listen. As always, we don't believe it's by chance that you're listening to this and watching this tonight. Um, for those, you know, I always like to give people an opportunity to get born again. And I never want to just waste this opportunity. There may be somebody who listens to this tonight. It may be now. It may be years from now. I don't know. But I, my prayer is that you would get born again. That if you've not made Jesus the Lord of your life, that you've not made a personal commitment to follow Christ, I want you to pray this prayer with me tonight. Just simply pray this. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord, and I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, just that simple. You believe that in your heart and confess that with your mouth, you are saved. You are born again. You are a part of the family of God. We welcome you to the body of Christ. Amen. Hey, friends, if, if you're out there today, you don't have a church home, but you want to connect with us and become a partner or an e-church member, um, if you're not here in the city of Richmond, Virginia, but you're in a surrounding state, county, whatever, another country, and you want to connect with this ministry, we want you to become a part of the 10,000 strong we believe in for. 10,000 partners, supporters, and friends of this ministry that we are believing and trusting God for to be a part of this spirit of fire nation, to go forth in the earth and to do great exploits. As we train people to go to teach them their authority, their rights and privileges as believers on the Lord Jesus Christ, pursuing their purpose and igniting a passion and fire for the kingdom of God, revealing to the world the true sons and daughters of God and blazing with his glory. We're here to change a culture, ignite a passion and live a dream. And so God has led you here. Listen, want you to connect. You can send us some information, um, connect with our con um, Fill out the connect card, connect information, and maybe in the, the comments section there, or you can go to our website at spiritoffire.us. That's spiritoffire.us and fill out the connect card as to how to become a partner member of this ministry. And so we'll have somebody to get in contact with you, and we thank God and welcome you to the Spirit of Fire family. Well, um, at this time also, we, we never uh, want to go without giving you an opportunity to sow and to plant. We believe we call it opportunity for prosperity time. If this message has been a blessing unto you and you desire to sow and to give um, because we can't do this without you, we thank God for our partners and supporters of this ministry. Um, uh, we just thank you for your continued support. Um, if that's you and you desire to sow, whatever God tells you to do, just do it. The Bible declares and decrees that you give and it should be given to you again. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. That God will cause men to give unto your bosom. He says, listen, when you do it, do it cheerfully. Do it out of a, a grateful heart, out of a heart of honor and love towards God, not under compulsion or of necessity. So as God is placing on your heart, and sometimes, listen, as you desire, as you um, uh, establish in your heart to give, then give as you do it. So what is it that you're establishing in your heart to give? Has this ministry been a blessing to you in any way, shape, fashion, or form? I encourage you to sow. And so we thank God for it. We expect to see the miracle working power of God to go into operation, even to enhance you, to increase you, and to prosper you in all that you do. And so um, some information is coming up on your screen to do that. And we thank God for an opportunity to be a blessing to you. So, well, well, y'all, I'm out of time, not certainly out of message. But on behalf, once again, of my wife, Raquel, and myself, this is Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia, with Spirit of Fire Fellowship. Hey, where we're changing the culture, igniting the passion, and living the dream. We love you. May the grace and peace of God be upon your life um, and that you uh, rest well and that you walk in divine health, healing, holding, and wholeness and increase. 
in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. See you next time. Peace.